Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to talk about a video done by Crouton T, The Curious Case of Mayo Ianopoulos, where uh, he becomes a, a great moralizer who has a lot of outrage and shreds any sense of intellectual credibility he had with me. Okay, so uh, the video starts off by talking about how Milo is absolutely useless. Uh, mind you, this guy was a journalist at Breitbart, uh, one of the most widely read news sources in the world, and he used his platform to give a voice to Gamergators. Uh, Crouton T makes reference to how uh, Creationist Cat has totally eviscerated Milo and strongly encourages people to go check out Creationist Cat's excellent video. So I went and checked out the first few minutes of it, where Creationist Cat is showing that uh, in the past Milo had views, and in the present Milo has different views, and therefore there's a problem. There's no problem with someone, incidentally, with someone uh, changing his or her mind. The problem comes if at one at point at some point in time they have this set of beliefs and then later on they have this other set of beliefs which contradict the first set of beliefs you know in other words they learn or they change their mind uh, the problem comes if at the third period of time they have vacillated back to the first set of beliefs so they're just flip they're saying whatever is convenient uh, for the day and there's no real view there Milo used to have some goofy views uh, on liberalism and uh, freedom of expression, all these other things, some years ago, and now he has different views. Well, he may have the same views, and he's just lying, of course. I don't know. I'm not inside Milo's head. Neither of any, neither are any of these other people, though their mind reading skills, that the mind reading skills at least that they uh, seem to think that they have, are wonderful. Anyway, back to uh, Mr. Sauerkraut and T. Back to Mr. T. Uh, who had on his uh, this video, which is scripted, another guy named Furious Fossa, who just takes up a large portion of the latter half of the video. And Furious Fossa is a sympathetic voice because he is the victim of uh, having, he was sexually molested by his father. And so he is, this is one of the dirty tactics that people in politically charged conversations like to engage in. They bring out a sympathetic vi victim and uh, who you're not really allowed to criticize because, you know, think of the victims. Now, T goes a little bit, uh, you know, Carlton T goes a little bit further and it says, you know, this guy has an extra specially important opinion on this. You know, like in some sense, having been sexually molested by his father makes this guy's views possessed of even greater authority than anyone else because there is some connection, ostensibly, between being the victim of some bad thing and becoming an expert on that bad thing. For example, if you're in a car crash, that immediately vests you with uh, expertise in investigating car crashes. If you get cancer, you become an oncologist, and if you're ever shot, you become a world-renowned scholar on gun policy. It, it follows us the night, does the day, right? No, of course not. The correct response whenever anyone trots out one of these sympathetic victims is to say, fuck you, that person has no special authority. Period. They have an opinion like anyone else. It's not more important. It's, and in some cases, it, in some cases, it will actually be less important because they are so emotionally damaged that they lack the capacity to be rational and reasonable in their pronouncements, as is the case with this furious Fossa guy, whose entire uh, section of his video was commended to us without reservation by uh, Crouton T, who uh, therefore is endorsing it, and so he should also be held to the same morally perfect standard that this furious Fossa guy. Uh, uh, claims is, is the one that uh, people should adhere to, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, Mayo Yiannopoulos does all of this under his real name. He doesn't hide behind uh, a pseudonym. He's not uh, you know, a guy who obscures his face so no one will know who he is. He goes out to events and talks to people. Indeed, he has to take security with him because of his, uh, the various threats, and indeed, his having actually, have, his ha his actually having been assaulted at some of these events and whatnot, unlike the brave people, Crouton T and Furious Fossa, who sit behind their computers where it's nice and safe and they get to they get to be brave on other people's behalf. I love these people. They're my favorite. They're the ones who will uh, sit behind the United States Army, cower under their beds and say, come get us, motherfuckers, I'm not afraid of you. And when they say that, by, you know, by that they of course mean the men who stand between you and me aren't afraid of you. 
and I'm happy for them to do the killing and the dying so that way I can stay nice and safe with my pillow over my head and hide from the big bad universe. Mm, I'm that brave. Rawr. Anyway, so this uh, this guy's pronouncements in this more this exercise in moral grandstanding and bandwagoning is that Milo should name names. Well, under what conditions would Milo have an excuse not to name names about the events that happened to this party that uh, allegedly he went to? I'll just grant that the party happened. Um, well, it's not a valid consideration whether or not his making such an accusation would bankrupt him, leave him homeless and unable to provide for himself and his family. That's an invalid consideration, Furious Fossils having none of it. That uh, worrying about your ability to continue feeding yourself is the coward's way out. It's not even a valid consideration whether or not you will be injured or killed, uh, to name names. So, um, in the United States we have the Witness Protection Program, clearly an exercise in futility because it is an invalid excuse uh, from people who have witnessed like organized crime coming forward to testify, even though they have this very weird habit of winding up dead for some inexplicable reason. It's an invalid, con their own personal safety in life, well-being, that of their family. These considerations are invalid. When are they invalid? Whenever there is a child involved. Think of the children. If you don't die to protect every child that you can possibly protect, you are morally deficient. So uh, has this Knight of the Buffet Table pronounced. I'm sorry, Knight of the Round Table. I didn't mean to imply anything about his being a fat, useless shit. No Surrey Bob. Well, the problem with moral grandstanding is that you immediately become uh, the target of your very own standards. You become subject to them, unless, of course, you conveniently exempt yourself. So rule number one, other people should be out there loud and proud under their real name, in public, taking the slings and arrows and getting beaten, not having any consideration for their, their health and welfare or their financial status in the future, while these guys hide behind pseudonyms, one of whom hides behind a pseudonym and obscures his face so that way nothing he says online can ever touch his real life. He goes through a, a, quite a lot of effort to make sure that he is safe and his financial future is not in jeopardy. Invalid considerations. Kraut and T, I expect that you will change the name of your YouTube channel immediately to your real name and you will start appearing on camera so that way everyone will be able to see who you are and know who you are without any ambiguity and whatever consequences befall your professional life, your financial life, they're irrelevant. And it's also irrelevant if any uh, any bad people come for you. These are not valid considerations, as we know. So, too, with you, Furious Fossa. I expect uh, all the same from you. Now, I'm an American. The party uh, that Milo allegedly went to, ostensibly went to, happened in California. Now, California has an age of consent of 18 years of age. The age of consent, sadly, in the United Kingdom, where they endorse child rape, is 16. Moreover, in the United Kingdom, if you are not of the age of majority, but you are dating someone, uh, so like, you know, you're both high school students and you're dating, uh, you can send each other sexually explicit texts. You can sext with one another. Here in the United States, that's what we call child pornography, which is endorsed by the United Kingdom, a government to which uh, Furious Fossa pays taxes, um, and it does apparently nothing at all to intervene on behalf of these children to protect themselves from themselves. Unlike how we do here in the morally great United States where when high school students sext each other and send each other uh, like nudes, we actually prosecute the children to protect them. That's how moral we are. That is how much better we are in the moral sphere than the morally bankrupt United Kingdom where, again, I point out, they endorse child rape. Indeed, go to, go to Germany. The age of consent there is 14. Where I'm from, we call that child rape in the second degree. That is a big no-no. Now, I expect you two to, to in, under your real names, and you know, without obscuring your faces, to be out there at least protesting this, possibly even rescuing these children, because, you know, that might, yeah, you might run up against the cops who might arrest you and you could get hurt. Not a valid consideration. 
Indeed, we also know that the law is not a valid consideration because Furious Fossa proposed that Milo should have, at that party, collected evidence of the uh, alleged wrongdoing. Well, the only way that I can think of where he could collect evidence which could be presented to a third party that shows what was in fact happening there is to take a picture of it or to record it, both of which are crimes in the United States because we do not tolerate child pornography, unlike uh, the people supported by uh, Furious Fossa. Now, Milo is apparently a pedophilia apologist for these things, which means with even greater force, both Kraut and T and Furious Fossa, ipso facto, are pedophilia apologists because they're not out there risking their lives, their safety, their financial futures, or indeed even inconveniencing themselves to protect these children. So, having uh, established these pronouncements, I expect that they will be out there post-haste doing all that they can to save these children from their government. Now, they might object to my position, my morally perfect position, that, well, these things are lawful where I live. If, it were, if there were a law that were passed that said you had to rape every children, you wouldn't follow that, would you? No, because even moral reprobates like you recognize that there are some limits beyond which no matter what the law says, you simply just may not go. In the United States, where we are morally great, unlike Europe, we don't tolerate child pornography and we don't tolerate child rape, which is a far cry more than can be said for your governments, which operate with your fulsome support. You could at least refuse to pay taxes to these governments as a sign of protest, but we know you won't do that either because you're both fucking cowards. Say what you want about Milo. And indeed, you will say what you want about Milo. Some of it, dishonest. Uh, there's a clip in the video where, because they want to really emphasize the, the uh, bad part of what he said, where they play the clip over and over and over and over and over, and they conveniently omit the second half of the sentence. And, obviously, why would you want to have the second part of the sentence in there? Because it, it could only serve to clarify the first part of the sentence. And with that clarification, the moral outrage evaporates. There is one point that all of the people over there, the, the people who are outraged by Milo at the moment, uh, there is one point on which they are all pretty much agreed. And it is that what he said was very clear. What he was saying is absolutely clear. And yet, on this point about which Milo is absolutely clear, none of them is able to say, to state with any specificity, what uh, the ages of these people actually uh, were. You would think that if Milo was oh so clear, that it would be a trivially easy question to answer, how old were these boys? So they uh, focus in on where he says, very young boys. Uh, this is in an interview with uh, a discussion with Joe Rogan, uh, where Joe interjects and says, Twinks. Milo says, yes. So those are twinks. What are twinks? They are men of legal age who look young. Now, they will focus on, he didn't say boys. He didn't say just young boys. He said very young boys. Here's a little bit of reasoning about how to go about evaluating the propositions that other people propose, so that way you don't fall subject to a phenomenon I mentioned in a video I just uploaded about Mayim uh, Bialik, which is the psychologist's fallacy of morphing, of projecting your thought processes into the head of someone else and saying, because I would have meant to say this when I used those words, it must mean, it must be what he also was saying. So you have to think about the person who is talking. In this case, it's Milo. He is a narcissist. He is a hyperdramatic faggot. He is an extremely hyperbolic drama queen. I mean, for fuck's sake, the guy, is, the guy shows up to conservative conventions talking about, oh, daddy, to mean the president of the United States, while in drag. Uh, this is a guy who is out for attention. The fact that he's a narcissist and has the same mental complex that afflicts the feminists who have to change their hair color to all unnatural shades of uh, colors three times a week, uh, whatever afflicts them also afflicts him. But the fact that that is true about him doesn't mean that he also doesn't bring something to the table. He is actually smart. For example, actually I won't get, I will. 
this Republican was trying to get all macho and toughy tough with him, talking about how uh, the Second Amendment isn't under threat because Republicans like him uh, won't let it happen. You come take my guns, the guy says, and the Milo quite properly points out that the guy is currently disarmed because it's illegal for him to be carrying a weapon where he is, and he has voluntarily, easily, quickly, rapidly, and willingly given up his firearm to be there. And he goes, where's your firearm now? Oh yeah, bitch. Paraphrase. Which, which uh, points up a, 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 a good argument. Don't go around grandstanding about what you will do when what you, in fact, are doing is inconsistent with what you claim you will be doing. Like, I was in the mall one day when I was a cop, and uh, these two teenagers were, uh, uh, these two boys, these young boys, 19 both, 18, 19, something like that, were cutting the fool. They were harassing people, and so I was off duty. I was minding my own business. I was there to get a, uh, get uh, some Starbucks coffee, one for me and one for this uh, very this uh, straight boy I, I liked and liked to talk to, who's one of my good friends now. He was very young at the time, 18, and uh, I was going to take him a coffee, but I intervened and you know like, hey, you two, quit playing jackass in here. If you're going to do that, take that shit outside. Uh, no one, no one wants your kind of screaming ex expletives at people and harassing customers. You know, just take your your tomfoolery elsewhere. And one of them said, "Well, how about a, something along the lines of, well, why don't you just wait right here while uh, he goes to the car and gets a gun?" And that's threatening me. Um, doesn't ordinarily work out well for the people who are communicating the threat. And in that case, it was especially stupid because. I, unlike they, was in fact armed, which they found out very quickly, as they very willingly and very rapidly uh, laid face down on the ground and put their, ha their hands out of the side, palm up, for some inexplicable reason. I think it's because they were instantly looking at the business end of my firearm with a, uh, a very polite but firm admonishment that if they did not follow my commands and made any furtive gestures, I would kill them on the spot. And after the local authority showed up to... Uh, affect the arrest and take them off to jail. I mentioned to them that, well, as it turns out, you didn't get to go to your car, but I have a car you can go to where there are, in fact, guns. And, uh, well, that resolved that particular issue. And then I went and had the coffee with my very young straight boy who uh, was very, very cute. And it worked out wonderfully. And you know, like I said, he and I are really good friends, and this has been nearly 20 years. So Milo is hyper dramatic, and he has one of the reasons he's so effective at talking against feminists and SJWs is that he shares a common set of personality traits with them, which is why he is able to so immediately identify the problem with feminism that it's becoming ever more hysterical and hyperbolic about ever, ever more trivial affairs. Milo has that same condition. So the more uh, of an emphasis he puts on a very, uh, very, 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 the less of, a, of an issue there actually is there. And as I mentioned in the previous video I did on this, in the gay community, uh, boy is commonly refu uh, re refused, uh, used to refer to people of legal age. I'm dating this boy. When a gay guy says he's dating a boy, no one in the gay community understands that to mean he's dating some prepubescent child. He's dating someone it's illegal for him to be date or, or to be sleeping with. When they say, I met this very young, uh, this very young thing that I, I'm just really into, it doesn't mean a 12-year-old. It doesn't mean a 13-year-old. It means someone who is of age, but who looks young. It's just not how it works in the vernacular in the gay community. Milo speaks that way. The more hyperbolic he is about a subject, very often the less, of, the less substance there is to it. The hyperbole the the goat getting of the proposition is what he's going after there because there's no actual substance to it and they talk about well he said it was well, it beggars belief well i would even in europe i would like to think that if you go to a party where suddenly a gay orgy breaks out that would beggar belief uh but this isn't just another usage of language that people commonly use which is dramatically exagger exaggerated and there's no real there there like oh my god you would never believe it and they tell you something that's that's completely believable it was the craziest thing I ever saw. It wasn't the craziest thing they ever saw. It was just whatever caught their, their attention at the moment. Going back to the 19th, 19th century literature, where you know things were, were spoken about in, in those terms. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. No, the ordinary times. 
But, you know, saying that, well, this completely banal experience happened, let me tell you about it, and everyone there was of age, isn't going to get any attention. There's nothing to engage with there. Let me get this straight. A completely, well, a somewhat unusual, but completely otherwise banal activity happened, and all the participants in it were of legal age. You know, why are we talking about this? Yeah, I like cheeseburgers. I like cheeseburgers, too. Why are we talking about it? There's, no, there's nothing there to discuss. That's Milo. But the Kraut and Tea crew seemed to... Uh, be confused by the personality uh, in, in a way that let that that where they focus on that and ignore the actual work that he's he's done. This is this is how Trump won, by the way. The left was incapable of focusing on substance and instead kept focusing on the the flash and bang, the the distraction. You dangle some keys over here, and like you know like cats, they stare at it and then they completely miss what's happening over here. It's misdirection. In, in the Trump case, and it's just hyperbole in Milo's uh, case, or at least that's what I understand. And when it comes to accusations or implications or, in, or even anything in that ballpark about uh, sexual impropriety with actual children, actual minors, I'm sorry, innuendo is not going to cut it. The person needs to come out and explicitly state, this activity happened and the people involved were of these ages. You know, the thing that everyone over there says is perfectly clear is the one thing that they can't actually identify. And that's because it's not perfectly clear. They are just grafting onto it. It's an excrescence. They are grafting onto what he said, what it is that they might have meant, or what it is that they want to believe about what happened. Here's, uh, I mentioned my law enforcement experience a little while ago, and it's actually relevant here. Um, when you're thinking about the person who's telling the story, you also have to think about the players involved in the story uh, that is being discussed. In this case, it would be, apparently, a pedophile gang. Now, every each gang uh, has its own unique uh, attributes. But all gangs, or almost all, I can't think of any offhand to which, to which this is an exception, uh, whether it be the five families, whether it be the outfit, the galloping goose, Mara Salvatrucha, Serenios, Nortenos, uh, Tongo Blast, uh, DMI, it doesn't matter. All of them, and I, by the way, I've covered uh, race gangs, I've covered drug gangs, I've covered uh, mafia, I've covered motorcycle gangs, and uh, from the East Coast, the Midwest, and the West Coast, and even beyond our borders. They all share in common certain attributes, one of which is that in, when it comes to the actual doing of the deeds, you don't invite strangers to come observe the doing of the deeds. Um, they are interested in these little, this little thing called, like, not getting caught by the cops if you can avoid it. A really great way to do that is not to invite people whose backgrounds you don't know when you're going to be pulling off the heist. You don't advertise it, and you don't do it in, you, you, uh, where there are witnesses who can identify you, as would be the case with inviting a Milo and his several friends. Uh, they have an aversion to reporters. They have an aversion to police. These, these three things... Um, are pretty much universal. The journalist thing changed a little bit because sometimes you can get investigative journalists in there who are actual journalists and it's known that they're journalists, but the people take a, a great deal of effort to obscure their faces to protect their identities. And uh, the journalists know that if they disclose these identities, they will be killed. Uh, that's It's not really a contract that you're going to sign with, with the gang or the mafia or whoever it is, uh, but they do make it clear. You betray us and we kill you and your family. And Mara Salvatrucha, in particular, uh, is especially gruesome about enforcing this against both their own members, uh, who, who talk to the media, or strangers, um, not in, in ways that aren't sanctioned, and, and whatnot. Uh, they take this shit very seriously, because they don't want to go to prison. But, apparently, in Hollywood, where there is this massive pedophile gang... Um, who are just willy-nilly recruiting children, offering them jobs, raping them, and whatnot, uh, in the presence of strangers, day in, day out, random parties where all a bunch of people are there, uh, that notwithstanding this, for some, for some reason, they've managed not to be caught. This despite the fact that law enforcement is really interested in catching pedophiles. By the way, one of the other little digs that people on the Kraut and T channel, one, one person said this, uh, when someone's talking about how pedophiles operate. Well, I guess you have experience. There are lots of people who have experience with how pedophiles operate. They're victims. But the implication here is that, well, if you know how 
how these people operate, it must be because you're in league with them. That, that's the, the wink and the nod there. Other people, people like me, law enforcement, who have spent a lot of time studying organized crime, and who have in fact arrested pedophiles, and who have spent, uh, who have spent n no small number of hours trying to break open these various rings that do exist throughout the world. Rarer that they, uh, the rarer that they are, they are present, and it requires a tremendous amount of effort to get into them because they are so good at protecting themselves. But who knew that the investigative tool that law enforcement should be using is just checking party invitations because it happens out in the open all willy-nilly. All of this leads me to conclude that Milo is just fishing for attention there and as I said in my other video, he is a provocateur who wants to get a reaction from people. Well, he succeeded. He got a reaction. But it turns out like a petulant child who's been told, you keep doing that, you're going to get it. And there it means a whipping. When the time comes as you ask for it, Milo, like those children, is in the position now of saying, well, I've changed my mind, I don't actually want it. Well, you know, the die is cast. Uh, so what I would say on these matters is if you're going to go around making... Uh, however subtly, uh, accusations of this type, or wanting people to take away these types of things, you need to not be doing it by innuendo. You need to be stating explicitly what it is you're claiming and exp expressly what it is you are not claiming. And Milo, in Milo's case, um, it's in his interest to actually state the ages of these people, for, well, for two reasons, my interest to hear it at least. One of which is uh, to resolve this rumor that uh, they were underage, or two, to prove true the claim that he actually did willingly sit by while children were being raped and did nothing about it. But unless and until there is some evidence, some information that implies that the people there were in fact underage, I'm not going to make that, that uh, completely unevidenced leap in logic, unlike the people at Kraut and T, many of whom dislike Milo. And by the way, there's a lot about Milo that really, really annoys me. You know, the whole, oh, daddy, shut the fuck up. I, you know, every time he talks, someone's purse falls out of his mouth. He wants to pretend to be the biggest gorilla in the room. And sometimes I just want to figure out that person, smack him with it, and hit him in the knee with its high heels to get him to knock that shit off. How he ever, like, got invited to CPAC is a mystery to me. Uh, the best I can uh, guesstimate is that it's an overreaction. Um, it's an overcompensation, an overcorrection among young Republicans because of the view that they, uh, older Republicans, are anti-gay people. Uh, the one thing that is true of American Republicans is they are absolutely 100% pig and shit ignorant incompetent at marketing. They can't do PR. They are completely fucking retarded at it. Uh, no matter which side they try to go on, they shoot themselves in the foot all day and all night. But anyway, that's what I have to say about the Kraut and T video. That's what I have to say about this this uh, moralizing, this posturing, this grandstanding gibberish that came out of it. And you know, the people who are in the outrage culture, you know, oh, I'm so morally great, and this just really pisses me off. Think of the children! Uh, how about this? When you are emotionally invested in a topic, that's a good indicator to you to step away from that topic. I used to investigate cases, not all of which was I emotionally indifferent about. Many of them really, really angered me. This motivates a lot of cops, and we'll talk about they really want to catch these pedophile rings. Uh, whether it have, whether it was uh, you know kidnapping, or whether it was a homicide of some type, whether it was you know, uh, child exploitation, child rape, rape, whatever, you know, there were cases that really, really bothered me. And when I was investigating those cases, and I started feeling that anger, that angst, that frustration, I would put down my pen, put down the paper, or you know, whatever it was I happened to be doing, if I could possibly manage it, go outside and smoke, go for a jog, go to the gym, go sparring, go to the gun range, and get that out of my system, because no one is served by, emo by uh, undisciplined, unfettered, unchecked emotions infecting the analytic process. I would have been poorly serving the families of these victims, or the victims themselves, in the cases where the victims were still alive, by not checking that, uh, by not being objective, by letting my emotions cloud my judgment and make me retarded, because ultimately, this is going to go to a courtroom. 
This is going to be put in front of jurors who are going to look and go, my God, this officer was not capable of being objective. We're going to discount his investigation. And that runs the risk of letting go free the very person who I have labored for, in some cases, uh, dozens to hundreds of hours to build a case to successfully prosecute. That didn't serve, that would have been a waste of my time. It wouldn't have served the families. And it doesn't serve your audience, Miss uh, Sauerkraut, when uh, you are doing it, and dishonestly doing it, I might add, um, in your video to pillory Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos. Even Ben Shapiro, no friend of Milo, has the good grace and sense to say, to step away from this and not get involved with it, showing a great deal of class, which you lack, as he mentioned when asked about why he hasn't gone after it, that among other reasons, you don't kick a man when he is down. That's from one of Milo's personal enemies in life who can display that kind of class. Something from which you and Furious Fossa, in your pseudonymity, uh, can, can uh, learn from. Otherwise, everyone else, have a great day.